Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the overview of Live Letter 57 on Final Fantasy XIV. And without any further ado, let's get to it. So, first things first about this letter, it comes with a special note regarding job balances and adjustments. They will no longer detail these balances and adjustments in the preliminary notes and possibly in the live letters as well because it does not want players to be overly concerned about how their job will end up getting nerfed or buffed just by looking at the paper or the numbers itself. As pre-announcing it will just make people work up on details that shouldn't worry them until they play the actual job on release. They decide to omit all job balance details until the patch day itself. But as we all know, Discord can be technically considered a third party tool. Yoshida goes on to say, There isn't really anything bad happening to the game if you use these apps. Not like you're rewriting data or input anything into the game. So it's hard to draw the line between tools we accept and the ones that break the game. Ishida started by referencing the loot mods that people use to take screenshots, and I quote, People say I haven't been taking a stance on this. It isn't allowed. He goes on to say that depending on the photos or content that we publish, it might go further than just an SC penalty. In some countries, these loot pictures might even break certain laws. Yoshida requests that people refrain from using lewd mods while posting and publishing screenshots. Now, Yoshida approaches the subject of third-party tools. Due to the rapid increase of the player base, he decided that this subject should be addressed due to the fact that different players with different uh, backgrounds are now joining the player base. He says, and I quote, It is against the TOS to use third-party tools. Please refrain from using them. There can be consequences like penalties to your account. And Discord. On the subject of DPS meters, Yoshida goes on to say, and I quote, DPS meters simply add the numbers that are shown in our battle logs. It isn't accessing game files, but I am taking a stance on this. We won't know what you have installed in your PC, but third-party tools are against the TOS. The gray zone is still gray. I'm asking you not to use these third-party tools. We won't be adding an official parser. So Yoshida here and the team maintain a stance that an official parser would make the community toxic over the numbers so they will never add a parser to the game on the same topic their reason boils down to the fact that a parser might increase efficiency but doesn't it does nothing for the ability to have fun playing the game on the same topic their reason boils down to the fact that a parser might increase efficiency but that does nothing for the ability to have fun playing the game. Furthermore, if you call someone out for low numbers, it goes beyond the fact that you're using a third party tool and touches on harassment. And I quote on this one, we cannot do anything if people have a little window on their screen showing ACT. We don't want to scan your computer for the software you have installed. That's against the law anyways. There are additional plugins for ACT, however, that influence gameplay a lot. This is breaking game balance and will be targeted for more severe penalties. For example, during the world's first race for Alex Ultimate, there was a tool used to instantly replace waymarks in, during the fight. I am sure if some of you have seen that. That was the first time I learned a tool like that exists. Players can replace waymarks on their own during the fight, of course, 
but having a tool placed them instantly sending the command to the server through the game is wrong. Please don't do this. We have taken actions on our side to prevent this from happening again. I will show you a bit on the machine later. There have been clips going around of a tool showing where an untargeted AOE will hit. If we catch you doing this, this will have a heavy penalty. Starting in 5.2, you won't be able to place markers during a fight. However, you will now have 8 markers. And those markers can be saved into different presets for different contents. So the new markers are added are 3 and 4. That brings us to the total of the 8 markers. You'll also be able to save your markers set up in 5 different presets so you don't have to manually do them again. As a side note, you can also steal other players setups and use them as your own. You will still be able to place markers while on PvP as this change seems to apply to PvE content rather than PvP. An important note is that these presets can only be used outside of combat, so you can't change your marker setup in the middle of combat. And that's it for part one of the live letter, and next up we'll have a sum up of what we'll be talking about for patch 5.2. Thank you all for watching, and until the next one, peace out.